I believe that everyone has at least one great story that only they can tell. My best story is dedicated to discovering these tales and releasing them into the wild, one guest at a time. As you may know, we're in the midst of our Pride 2020 event, where we're bringing to you stories from within the LGBTQ plus community. I'm Travis Tidmore. Join me as I discover Ryan Sestata's best story. Ryan, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hi, I'm so good. How are you? Doing good. Uh, tell everyone a little bit about your backstory. Okay, um, well, I am 29 years young, um, a fresh 29 year old, and uh, born and raised in Amarillo, Texas. Um, I've moved away a couple of times, but always came back, um, like a lot of people do. But <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, I love this place now. It was um, a growing process and um, I had to learn to love this place. Um, I think it's just one of those where I'm probably one of those, uh, as you can tell, out there kind of personalities and people <laughs> that maybe would do better uh, coastal. Um, maybe that be California, New York, somewhere like that, Florida. Um, but here in the Bible Belt, um, although we have gotten a lot better in the past 10 years or so, um, it's, um, yeah, it's <laughs> been a process to learn to love to live here. But I do. I love the place now. Um, a lot of the people I've come to love um, grew up, um, went to Amarillo High School, graduated from there in 09. Um, I guess, like, latter years of high school going into um, like college age is where I was really like doing that self-discovery or allowing myself to do that self-discovery. I still have all of the um, chains of past religion and everything that was kind of weighing on me. So um, yeah, um, a lot has brought me to where I am today and I probably can't tell you in just 20 minutes. So. <laughs> I will tell you like a condensed part of a certain portion of my history. <laughs> well, with that, let's let's get into it. What's your best story? Awesome. Well, okay. It also probably that my best. I bet I have like a lot of really good stories. <laughs> I've lived a really fun life so far. So, but um, this is an impactful story, I hope. Um, and um, I just recently learned, I guess a lot of people don't really know a lot of my background. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, I was born and raised basically in the church, um, Souls Harbor was what it was called. Um, it was non-denominational, but basically like Pentecostal. So, um, I was born basically on the, well, not basically, I was actually born on the pastor's birthday. And so my middle name, Lee, actually comes from him. That was his middle name, uh, Freddie Lee Richardson. Uh, so he was like basically my grandpa figure growing up. Um, it was a small enough congregation and a consistent enough congregation that like we all were huge family. It was very ALT like in that sense of you always kind of see the same people. Um, when there is new blood, it was that like, ooh, there's someone new, let's go like invite them to lunch or like get to know their story or like, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And then that would scare some away <laughs> or some would stay and then join the family. Um, so yeah, I guess very <laughs> ALT-like. <laughs> but and maybe- For those who don't fun. know, ALT is the Amarillo Little Theater. Oh, yes. Amarillo Little Theater. Hopefully our, our audience is not just in Amarillo, so. <laughs> the theater yes, here right. in town. Yes, for all of you in China, um, that is <laughs> Emerald Little Theater. Um, but yes, so it was very much that. So also very small town like, and that like everyone knows each other's business. It's hard to keep secrets in that kind of environment. Um, I also was there like all the time. We were there like Sunday mornings. We also had Sunday night services for a long time as well. So it was very much like, oh, go to church in the morning. And then we all like go out as a congregation to lunch at uh, Malcolm's usually, a cute little ice cream uh, burger diner we have here. 
And uh, then we would like go home, maybe watch football, um, my family, not me, <laughs> for like a little bit. And then we'd head on back to church for that night. Then we had Wednesday nights that we were there at church. Um, whenever I was a part of a dance team, we had Thursday night rehearsals. Um, we also had Saturday morning prayer meetings um, that you could attend. Um, it was optional. Well, I mean, all of it was optional, but you know, uh, <laughs> it was like at seven in the morning. So that's why I say no that. Um, we didn't go a lot, <laughs> but then, um, yeah, it was just like very much church was like my life. That was what I, what I did, especially whenever I wasn't in school yet. It was like, I was at home with family. And then if we weren't there, we were at church. So that was like all I knew. And so I guess the visual that I have for it now is that it's just like all of this like dirt that was just packed on and on and on and on on top of my mind and um, clouded and dirtied up and muddied up um, my view, I guess, of who I truly am. So yeah, so I just was like in this mindset of like Christian, Christian, Christian. Um, I also say all of this not to be a bad thing because again, I like, I love that people have faith and I think that's a beautiful thing that you have something you can believe in and we'll get to sort of what I believe later. But um, at this time, it's just, I was like laser focused on, you know, singing is my passion. So I was like Christian singer, like, that's what I want to be. I want to be in the Christian music world. That's all I was able to listen to was Christian music. Um, everything else was worldly and inappropriate. Um, I couldn't watch Monsters, Inc. Um, I couldn't read Harry Potter or watch the movies because that was witchcraft. Um, there was like so much that like I couldn't do. It was very sheltered life. But also like my parents, they led with love. So it was never that environment of like, like a militant sort of, you have yeah. to do this. Um, there were set rules and we respected our parents in that sense, but it, um, it was led by love. It was because they wanted to see their children um, have the best conclusion, you know, at the end yeah. of all of this. So, um, and I guess that was the environment too, um, but the way in which they believe was like, if you struggled with something, it was like a demon in you. Um, so as I kind of like got to the age, maybe like middle school age, um, I kind of always felt that attraction to boys, but I did feel an attraction to girls too. Um, I would say though, like middle school to high school, I started realizing that I actually had feelings for a good friend of mine and I didn't know what to do with that because from everything that had been piled on to me, I just thought like, oh, that's wrong. Like I'm going to hell for living or even thinking that for a second. So yep. again, I just like try to push that out of my mind. Well, sophomore year, or it was like freshman or sophomore year of high school. Um, this is like 05, 06. Um, I have a friend that came to church and he was like new blood. Again, we were all like, ah, Let's, who's this new guy? And he was like not shy about his worship either. He was like front row, like hands in the air, dancing around, singing loud, everything. So we were like, wow, who is this man? Um, so it turns out he was just a few years older than me, but he was like more confident in his being at that time, but still secretive because of religion. Um, so it took me a minute to get to um, his truth. But whenever he shared his truth with me, I was like, oh, that's a lot of how I feel. So maybe this means that I am like him and he identified as gay um, to me at, in that conversation. So I thought, hey, that's me. Um, yeah. So I kind of just like move forward with that again, secretly. It's that like in the closet thing, if you will. Um, sucks that we have to do that, but I mean, it is what it is. So, um, then we get to the point where, you know, he becomes more regular. Uh, my friend Israel is his name. Um, and we called him Izzy. So for purposes of the video, he's Izzy. Um, so Izzy and I became uh, members of the praise and worship team um, 
his past passion was also singing. So um, we led worship. Um, we would do that for our, the youth group on Wednesdays. We also were like co-choreographers for the hip hop dance team. Um, I know me, hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I can groove though, I swear. Uh, anyways, um, we just like, yeah, we really bonded. We really became best friends and we were there for each other. Um, and yeah, so I guess this, this, there came a time where like, it got exhausting only having one person know my secrets. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, you know, I want a female perspective. So I told a, a girl named Christy and she like backed me up. She even like like led with those scriptures that everyone like uses that's against homosexuality and all of that. But she like countered it and said, you know, like people will tell you this, but that's not the truth. And and this has been edited and all this stuff. So she's like supporting me and I'm feeling yeah. like so loved and encouraged in that moment. It's incredible. So this is a Friday night. Um, the next, well, actually later that night, my mom says, hey, we're going to the prayer meeting in the morning, that Saturday morning, early prayer meeting. Um, and I'm like, wow, okay, cool. That means we have to wake up really early. That sucks <laughs> but cool yay god so like i'm like yay let's go um so we went but also i'm like this is weird because we don't ever do this but like i'm not gonna question jesus let's go so we went um towards the end the pastor was like all right guys we'll see you after lunch well i'm like this is a saturday we don't have like a saturday night service so i'm like thoroughly confused well we finished lunch and I guess like I already had that pit in my stomach. Like, you know, everyone gets whenever something bad is going to happen. Um, but I just didn't know. And so I'm like, yeah, whatever. Maybe like, I just need to eat, you know, that kind of thing. Or, oh, she's gassy, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so I waited out, we head back to the church and we go straight up to the pastor's office um, where we have a private meeting with me, my parents, Izzy and his guardians at the time, who are also my parents' best friends. So, um, Christy, the girl that I had told the night before, immediately had run and told the pastor that I came out to her um, in confidence, but cool girl. Um, so she went, immediately spilled the tea. Um, also, she involved Izzy, which I never said anything about him but she threw yeah. him under the bus as well, um, out of assumption. So that's why he and his guardians were there. Well, they like went even more in on Izzy and they had printouts of his MySpace page that he had, he had created um, to confide in other homosexuals, um, which I had done the same thing. I had a boyfriend once in North Carolina that I never even met in person and probably I got catfish. Now that's a thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who even knows? It probably was like some middle-aged woman that I was talking to. So Harriet, that was fun. <laughs> it was a good month we had there, Harriet. But anyways, um, they had his printout of his MySpace and that's like private stuff. Um, but they had that there and they like read out these posts and things and like they went in on us. And again, it wasn't like from a hatred standpoint. So it's such like, can I say curse words? Am I free yeah. to say curse words? Okay. Yeah. It's such a mind fuck because it's like you want to be mad at the situation, but then you feel like you did bad or like you're in the wrong. So, but yeah. for just living <laughs> and like living what you feel. And so, yeah, it's such, it's such a thing. Well, it got worse to the sense of they wanted to help us by um, separating us. So they told us that we could no longer hang out. Um, and Izzy and I are like joined at the hip at this point. So they told us we could no longer hang out. We also, um, m my family would frequent uh, his family's place. And so if we went over there, I was to stay with the adults. Um, if Izzy wasn't home, then I could go back to his room and like watch TV in there or whatever away from the adults. But like, we just, we were literally actively separated from each other. Um, best yeah. friend, torn apart. And so at that age, like, 
yeah, I'm in high school, but I'm I'm a sensitive person at heart. You know this. <laughs> Anyone yeah. who knows me watching this knows that. So that like really did a number on me. And he was like my one person that truly, truly knew everything. I had all the friends in high school, but they didn't know that about me. Uh, yeah. They all knew it about me, but I didn't tell them yet, yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but still, um, it just was very traumatic, um, I guess is the word for it. Um, so they ripped us apart. It created this divide to where I guess we had to just be rivals because like, hey, we can't be best friends. So let's just be enemies. And then of course it was hard for the friends that we had because they had to choose sides. And it yeah. was just a whole thing that the adults and the pastors in charge and all of that and doing for what they think is what Christ wants. Like they're they don't realize how they're actually affecting every individual involved. Yeah. So um, still to this day, it's one of those things I battle. And um, Izzy and I, unfortunately, still have never got back to that point. Um, we're Facebook friends and we keep up with each other. And I will always have a, such a mad love for him. He's a beautiful, beautiful human being. Um, he um, is with a boy right now and they are having like so much fun living life. He, um, I think, has custody of like his sister's kids. So he's like living this like really cute, like little family life. Um, and I'm so, so happy for him. But it's just one of those things that's like there's still this divide there and it yeah. sucks, but it stems from that. And it's one of those like, we would have to have a huge conversation to move past that to even get pa uh, to that point of how close we used to be. And that's because of this love action that had happened, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that was the, the, the friend situation of it all. But then not only that, but that forced me back into the closet. It made me uh, bring forth my sin of homosexuality in front of the church um, to where I got prayed for and the demons cast out of me. And then I just got to go on to live as a heterosexual for then on because you can be cured like that. Um, sarcasm. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know you caught it, but for <laughs> the people in China. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so that was the first instance. Then we moved to like, maybe a year or two later and I had owned a pair of girl pants and then my parents found that it was a whole other conversation and then a whole other like bible opening here's these scriptures and blah 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 and me like okay okay um I'll reel it in I'm straight blah 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 um mm -mm. Uh, <laughs> and so then you know give it a couple more years well at this point it was like um, I don't know if a lot of people even know this, but um, Jason Crespin, who is a, a big figure here locally in Amarillo, Texas, I had joined the Amarillo, the Amarillo Little Theater Academy, <laughs> and uh, he was the director. So it became that dynamic of, wow, this is kind of like the first um, homosexual man who I've been around for like an extended, an extended amount of time. Um, yeah. We had uh, these two guys that came to our old church a lot that everyone made fun of all the time. And so that was, I guess, my first viewing of a gay couple or whatever, because they would just kind of like throw stones at them all the time secretly. But Jason was really that first man who I was like, wow, this is someone I can like look up to because he is like living himself without shame. Yeah. Um, so I had such admiration for him. I still have such admiration for him. But at this time, it was that, um, like, wow, this is someone I can confide in. So I told him my story. And he was someone that then I could trust to be like, hey, um, I think I might have this conversation with my mom soon. And then he would give me advice and, like, ways that I could approach it and things like that. And then, of course, he would always say, you know, I'm always here if you need uh, someone to talk to afterwards. He's just, he was such a guiding light in this time. Um, yeah. And so I came to the conclusion in my mind, um, and I told Jason, like, okay, so I'm going to wait until I graduate high school. 
and then I will come out to my parents. And then if it goes south, then like, bye, I'm going to college. (laughs) And then I don't have to deal with that. And that sucks because, again, I don't think a lot of people who aren't homosexual, um, they they don't know this. They don't know this mind, uh, this thought process that we have to go through or this like anxiety buildup that we have um, to coming out. But it's just, it was one of those like, I in my mind, judging based off of reactions with church and everything like I thought okay I'm going to be cast aside because clearly they're not going to let me live this life so and clearly that it had been like ingrained in me that I was not going to be able to be happy or truly happy um if I were to be with a man it was like all of that stuff thrown at me so I just thought okay I'll come out then well it was actually um last semester of my senior year, whenever my mom found a DVD (laughs) that was maybe naughty. Um, Actually, it was my dad that found it. Um, He was looking for a DVD for my brother and found a Guys Gone Wild DVD (laughs) that was actually not mine. I am a Christian (laughs) woman still. I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) But it was my friend's gag gift that we had left in my DVD player. when we decided to view it once being stupid. So they found the DVD. We had a family meeting about not only my dad losing his job at the time, but me um, being a homosexual and not being able to change it. So at this family meeting, my mom was like, you know what, this is something we realize now that's not gonna change. Um, This is something that is you. And so if you won't talk to us about it, will you at least talk to your brother? So. Um, yeah, I sat down with my brother, Tyson, uh, the one who's four years older than me, and told him my whole basic gay life story. And then the rest is history. I mean, it's been a, a process, of course, but I am definitely one of the lucky ones in the sense of my parents did not disown me. Um, I feared that so much. Um, And I don't know why, because they always led with love. Like I said, it was never a sense of disgust or hatred towards me. Um, It was just like a worry for my soul kind of thing, I guess. (laughs) Which is another thing I can't understand at this point. I don't have children. Um, I can think that I understand it, but I know I'm not going to understand. I know you understand it. But I... um, I look from their point of view as an empath and I'm like, okay, they don't want to lose their son or their child um, to a bad lifestyle or to um, all the bad that is put forth about homosexuality, all of those bad stereotypes and things. Um, I have an uncle or had an uncle who passed away of AIDS. I grew up not knowing that. Um, I was told that he just had a disease or he was an alcoholic, but came out uh, to find that he was um, HIV positive. And that is what led to him getting sick and dying. And that was a role model I could have had that could have changed my whole path. But I didn't know that. It was hidden from me. But knowing that on the empath side, of course my parents worried. I mean, they have every reason to worry. My mom had a best friend in high school who was gay and she saw him get bullied and things like that. So it's just, they know from experience in a sense, not that they lived my life or or that they think the same way as me, but from their experience and what they had to go off of, they did their best. And so I can't fault them for that. We've um, talked it all out now. My mom has apologized. Of course, a lot of the things they don't even remember that they said, because a lot of things you don't know have an impact on people. But yeah. it's stuff we still work through to this day. Um, but my ex came home for Thanksgiving. Um, you know, my nieces and nephews would call him uncle, things like that. So it's very much a thing now where um, I feel much more able. I guess able is the good word because now I'm able to think. I'm able to open my mind and actually let myself be. Um, I'm now on the gender journey. I'm gender fluid is how I identify at the moment, Um, but I could be a transgender woman. Um, I could just be um, a cisgendered male um, at the end of my journey. 
it's just something I'm not trying to rush right now because I was such in a box for so long that I'm like, you know what? Fuck all of that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, now it's my life. And yeah. so, um, yeah, that's a little bit about me and my religious history that maybe all of you don't know. Um, I had an incident back in 2016 and probably should have died that night. Um, so I very much know that there is something that kept me here. Um, I don't know what I believe that is. Um, I don't think any one person can truly ever say what true entity or entities there are um, or if there are, but I just know for me and my own personal belief that I feel there is something beautiful out there that has kept me here. And so um, for a lot of Christians, what y'all would know from the Bible is living with Christ's love and leading that sort of life. I guess you could say that's what I'm trying to do to the best of my abilities. Um, in my mind, I'm just trying to spread a lot of joy and throw butterflies at you and <laughs> rainbows and all of the things, unicorns. Um, I'm, I'm a stereotype. I'm sorry. <laughs> But yeah, it's a little bit about me. Well, thank you for that story. Yeah. Ryan, where can people find you online? Um, well, I have uh, my Instagram. It is it me, Ryan Lee, I-T-M-E, Ryan Lee. And then my Facebook is Ryan Lee Sustata, S-U-S-T-A-I-T-A. -A. Um, yeah. I think Perfect. that's all. I have a Twitter, but y'all, I'm she's not active right now, so I'm trying to get better. Um. <laughs> I understand. I go through phases yeah. with Twitter. <laughs> and besides that, online you can probably find me on like Amazon Prime, spending money that I fit in, <laughs> or <laughs> you know, <laughs> Jeffrey Star Cosmetics. Oh, I need to slow down. Um, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me, Travis. I love you, and I appreciate the work that you're doing. And thank you for giving a voice to um, the LGBTQIA plus community. No problem. I'm happy to. I want to thank Ryan for coming on and telling us that story. Go ahead and check back here tomorrow for all new episode in our Pride 2020 series. If you don't mind, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the show. Uh, our title music is Red, White, Black, and Blue by Peg and the Rejected. If you have a story you'd like to tell, hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, or via email. All those links are in the description. Until next time, go live your best story. <laughs> <laughs>